Hi, my name is Pranav Chaudhary, and I'm going to give a talk on rational points on conics and elliptic curves. Uh, I gave a talk on this long ago in monsoon math camp. I guess it was in August. And I had slides prepared, so I thought to upload a video on YouTube also. So, okay. What we'll be covering in today's sessions is Bachelor's equation, Bachelor's duplication formula. Uh, it is related to like three degree conics, you can see, uh, three degree curves, you can say. And then we will be analyzing two degree conics, how to find rational solutions to that, and like some stuff in that, basically projecting a line to a conic and this, and Legendre's theorem. Okay, so let's start. Bachelor's equation. So it is a problem of writing an integer as a difference of a square and a cube. So in other words, we fix an integer C, basically this is C, and look for the solutions to Diophantine equation, y square minus x cube equal to C. And y and x are rational here. So why it is called Bachelor's equation? It is because uh, an amazing property of this equation was uh, Bachelor's duplication formula, like which was given by Bachelor in 1621. So what it was, so it says that if x not comma y not is a rational solution to the Diophantine equation, y square minus x cube equal to c, then this complex looking term like x not to the power four minus eight c x not upon four y not square comma minus x not to the power six minus 20 c x not cube plus eight c square upon eight y not cube is also a rational solution to the same Diophantine equation. Further, we can show that if c is not equal to one and minus 432, either of these, and neither of x not comma y not is zero. Like clearly y not cannot be zero here. And I will show why x not can also be like why x not can also not be zero. Then the repeating process leads to infinitely many rational solutions. Okay, so like it's very fascinating. If you get one solution, you get infinitely many solutions, right? So back to Bachelor's equation. Uh, what if we find solutions in integers? So let us take a case c equal to minus two. So we have to find solutions to y square minus x cube equal to minus two in integers. So if you solve it, it turns out that three comma plus minus five are the only integer solution. So it's very interesting that it has infinitely many solutions and rationals, but when you narrow down to integers, there are only two solutions. So interestingly, it also has been proved that for any non-zero integer c, this equation y square minus x cube has uh, only infinitely many, oh, sorry has only finitely many solutions in integer x and y. So motivation behind such a complex equation. So like if you see this formula, it's very complex. It is a four degree term in the numerator and six degree term. So if you try randomly, there are infinitely two degree polynomials only for numerator. So it's like feasible, not feasible to solve it, right? So you need something to solve it, like something you can say, uh, I cannot recall the word something magical or like something thoughtful or creative basically. Yeah, creative. Okay, so the Bachelor's formula comes from geometry. Basically, my main aim of session is to show how algebra and geometry are interrelated. Like it's very interesting when I studied it for the first time. So let us first look how the graph of Bachelor's equation look like. Since we are dealing with geometry, it's like very natural to deal with the graph. So it looks something like this. Uh, Yeah, so we were looking at the graph of this equation. So basically, uh, it is the graph at c equal to one. So I will like vary c from minus thousand to thousand, and you see like how it varies. Okay, I will just zoom out a bit. Yeah. So like you see this point, this part basically uh, increases or decreases, right? Other part almost remains same. Like it obviously shifts, but like you just need to see how it looks like, right? So if you see in a like wider scale. The outer part, except this like bulging part, you can say remains the same, right? Okay, yeah. So uh, this is how the graph looks like. So let us now consider a point P anywhere except the point on x-axis. So like, uh, if you see, uh, okay, let me just try zooming in. Yeah, if you see, there is like a small hole here, right? This is the point and the point on the x-axis. 
basically y not becomes zero here and that's the reason and we do not want y not or x not to be zero okay so and draw tangent to that point p intersecting the graph again at a point q so this is a point p and you draw a uh, tangent and intersects this again at the point q so now if p is x not comma y not uh, like it is a rational solution to this equation then we can find the equation of this tangent and coordinates of the point q basically analytical geometry okay not analytical coordinate batch yeah so okay no hit yeah this is what batchet did okay so there is one more way to find more rational solutions if we take p1 and p2 like they are two solutions two rational solutions and draw a line passing through these two points it intersects this curve in one more point and that is also a rational solution to this okay so how can you say that this line will intersect this okay so i will show you one thing here uh, yes so basically there is one thing known as bezout's theorem which states that if you take a m degree conic and an oh sorry m degree curve or an n degree and an n degree curve and if you draw them on the projective plane they intersect at exactly three points oh really sorry what am i saying they intersect at exactly mn points all right so like line is 1 degree this curve is 3 degree so 1 into 3 is like three points a line and a 3 degree curve intersect at three points so like even in that tangent case uh, there was something like this um, okay let me just draw randomly some okay i draw a tangent here like this if this is some say point p4 and this is some point p5 then if you guys know that what a tangent it is basically the line p4 p4 like you bring the other point very very close to this p4 only and make it approach p4 only like make the same point so it's the p4 p4 and then there third one also p4 p4 p5 so basically three intersection points two of them are same okay yeah, uh, i forgot to say in this bezout's theorem we are counting the points with the multiplicity so in this tangent case this p4 point has multiplicity 2 okay uh, okay so next yeah so now uh, i will show you like how do we get some six points so uh, we have these three points I draw tangent at P three. It intersects the curve at P four. Then I join P one P four to get this point P five, and then I draw tangent to P five, and it intersects P six. And you continue continuously infinitely. You'll get infinitely many points. Okay. So now some basic definitions. A rational point, a point x comma y said to be rational if x y are rational. Rational line, a line a x plus b y plus c equal to zero. A B C are rational. is a rational line or uh, it is an important rule i will use it in the further i will read yeah okay sorry i am being very nervous i don't know why so two intersecting rational lines intersect at a rational point a rational conic we will say that the conic is rational if the coefficients of its equation are rational numbers same as rational line and rational point okay now we analyze two degree conic our main topic for today's session So let a x square plus b x y plus c y square plus d x plus e y plus f equal to zero be a rational conic. Now, what can you say about the points obtained by intersection of a rational line with the conic? Will the points of intersection be also rational? The answer is no. Why? So if we use analytical geometry to find the coordinates of these points, we will get a quadratic equation x for the x coordinates of the intersection. And uh, the points are rational or not? that depends on the solution to that quadratic equation so it can be quadratic irrationalities also all right so it are it is not always rational it can be rational so however if one of the intersection points is rational then so is the other because 
in a quadratic, if one root is rational, then other is also rational, right? So now using this simple idea, we present a strategy to find rational points on a two degree conic. We will not be dealing with a specific conic. We will see like in a general, all conics we will be analyzing. So first of all, what is a projection I will be saying? So let O be a rational point on a rational conic uh, and L be a rational line. Now we project the conic onto the line L from the point O. What does it mean? Okay, is there an image? Let me see. Okay, yeah. our image has a very, very wrong place. Uh, see, if this is an O, the point we said, and uh, this is the line L. We are projecting this conic to this line L. Now, how do we project? We take a point P and the projection of P is basically join OP and you get a point Q. So Q is projection of P under O. And how do you project O? You join O with O, basically OO, which is the tangent at O. So, oh, okay, uh, something like this. And this is the projection of O, let's say O dash. This is how you project. Also, you can see that uh, there's a bijection between this. I mean, like, what does it happen? I have the recording issue. Oh. Yeah, so, like if you take any point on this line, you join this and you get another point. If you take any point here, oh, it will definitely intersect. So yes, there can also be one more thing that if you take such a point that, okay, drawing can be really bad here to so just ignore that. Oh, if you take a point such that, oh, let's say this be A, O A is, parallel to L. So since we're taking this in a projective plane, we say that they meet at a point at infinity. So yes, we get all the points. This is how we define projection. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. I have written it. So we draw a line passing through O intersecting the corner at an, another point say P meeting L at a distant point say Q, then Q is called the projection of P under O. To project O itself, we use the tangent line to the conic at O. Can you see that projection is a bijection? I just explained you. Uh, this projection, like rational to rational. Okay. So basically, what it says is now if P is a rational point, then Q is also a rational point. And if Q is a rational point, then so is P, as O is assumed to be rational. So this rational points on the conic are in one to one correspondence with the rational points on the line. Basically, C. Uh, this is. I'm not familiar with this technology. I rarely use it. Okay. So first of all, since O is a rational point, uh, as we said, pick O says that O is a rational point on a rational point. And now if we say Q is rational, I'm proving the one direction. Then can you see that OQ line is a rational line? This line basically is a rational line. And what we said. I just said a simple idea. If a rational line intersects with a rational conic and one of their intersection points is rational, since O is, the other point P is also rational. So if Q is rational, P is also rational. Okay, now for the other di direction, o, o is rational. And if we take P to be rational, then this line is a rational line. And since L was a rational line, then intersection of two rational lines is a rational point. And thus, Q is a rational point. I hope this is clear. So we first analyze two cases, x squared plus y squared equal to one and x squared plus y squared equal to three. Let's just see x squared plus y squared equal to one. We project the circle onto the y axis from the point minus one comma zero. Basically uh, from this point onto this line. So the projection of the point x, y under the point minus one comma zero is zero comma t because x coordinate is zero on the y axis. So the equation of the line connecting minus one comma zero to zero comma t is this. And since x comma y also lies on the unit circle, so we get the relation like uh, x square plus y square equal to one, one minus x square equal to y square and y uh, is t times one plus x, so t square one plus x square. For a fixed value of t, this is quadratic equation. Like if you fix t, 
this quadratic equation whose roots are the x coordinates of the two intersection of the line l and the circle basically oh first intersection and this second intersection this is this is to the linear equation 1 minus x equal to t square 1 plus x okay how oh. so factorize it as 1 minus x 1 plus x okay now you can cancel out the 1 plus x term because if 1 plus x is equal to 0 it means x equal to minus 1 so like note it down and after cancellation you get this thing only now we can reject x equal to minus 1 case because uh, just see here we are projecting from the point minus 1 comma 0 so l obviously passes through minus 1 comma 0 we are finding the other intersection right so yes and now solving this gives x equal to minus 1 minus t square upon 1 plus t square and y equal to 2t upon 1 plus t square so clearly if t is a rational t is rational then x comma y is a rational point and converse is also true okay one direction t is rational 1 minus t square is rational 1 plus t square is rational uh, their quotient is also rational similarly here other side you can also like try basically there is nothing hard uh, because like if x comma y uh, okay just see from here if x comma y is a rational point then x is rational 1 plus x is rational y is rational y upon 1 plus x is rational and hence p is rational x is not equal to minus 1 that is already said so this will give you all point except minus 1 comma 0 as i said x is not equal to minus 1 so if you want to get minus 1 comma 0 then you must substitute infinity for t basically point at infinity <coughs> analyzing x square plus y square equal to 3 so how many rational points lie on this circle answer is 0 let's see how so suppose there is a rational point x not comma y not which lies on the circle so we let x not equal to x by z and y not equal to y by z. We can basically make this by taking their LCM, the LCM of the denominators, so that they have the common denominator for some x, y, z to be integers. <coughs> so it basically reduces to x square plus y square equal to 3z square and such that x, y, z are integers. We have to find now integer solutions. And this would have x, y, z equal to 1. Why? Okay, I have a not written here. So let's just assume. so if x comma y comma z if not equal to 1 say equal to p then x equal to p x dash y equal to p y dash and z equal to p z dash correspondingly you can write p square x dash square you can take p square common here y dash square equal to 3 p square z dash square P square just cancel and you get a similar equation with just x dash y dash z dash with gcd1. So you can like generalize and say gcd is 1. So consider mod 3 which gives x comma y congruent to 0 mod 3 because uh, RHS is 0 congruent mod 3 and a square is 0 or 1 congruent mod 3. So both should be 0. Before left side, left side of the equation is divisible by 9 and thus z is divisible by 3 because like 9 cancel out with 3 and 3 is left. Which is a contradiction as then g of x, y, z becomes 3, which is not equal to 1. Basically, at least 3. So, this contradiction shows that no two rational numbers have squares whose sum is 3. Okay, so now I will generalize it. Let's generalize theorem. So, let us consider the equation ax square plus by square equal to cz square and ask, does it have a solution in integers? So Legendary's theorem says that there is an integer m depending on a simple fashion on a, b, c. Like there is nothing complex. It is related to a, b, c, but not in a complex manner. So that the above equation has a solution in integers, not all zero, because if everything is zero, then zero equal to zero. So we neglect all zero case. If and only if it has a real solution with x, y, z, not all zero, and also the congruency. This has a solution in integers that are relatively prime. Okay, let me explain it. Sounds a bit complex when you read it in one flow. So, what is says that uh, if it has a real solution, 
like rational or irrational any solution with x y z being like real not all zero obviously and this congruency has a solution in integers that are relatively prime to m then there is exist an integer m oops sorry uh yeah so like there exists a solution in integers to this equation and vice versa also holds okay for the vice versa case because if an integer solution exists then such an m exists which depends on a simple fashion yeah so generalizing this result obtained for ax square plus by square plus cx square basically we can analyze using legendre theorem the solutions to this equation integer solutions so we consider this equation ax square plus by square plus c plus dxy plus ey plus fx we substitute x equal to x by z and y equal to y by z okay do not confuse this y equal to y these are different y's okay i just wrote because y dash is tougher to write every time than y sorry for my laziness <laughs> Okay. Oh, uh, it reduces the new question to this. Like, oh, uh, if you want, I will write this down. So, a x square by z square plus b y square by z square. So, every term we'll get a z square by the normal term except the c term, z square, and this has z and this has z. So, f x z, you multiply by z square both sides. E y z, d x y remains same because it had z square, c z square. A b y square and a x square, and x y z are integers here basically, because that's the point of this substitution. Else why will we do this, right? And x y are rational, so yeah. Okay, now this is what we have. We basically complete the square here. Oh, uh, here it should be b. This is a typo. B by two a. Uh, yes, and like with y square, there is some term left, blah blah blah. With y z also some blah 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 and z square. This covers the term of like x square, a x square, plus. Uh, if you multiply, you get b square. Oh, wait a second. Yeah, b square by four and some stuff is left. Basically, with y square and z square, this stuff is left. It covers the term of x y if you see, and covers the term of y z. Not fully. Okay. What am I? Ah. Uh, okay. <laughs> Let's say it again. Basically, it covers the term a x square completely. Ah, uh, c d x y completely, and f x z completely. And this is correct here. It should be d only. I just said something nonsense. Ignore it. Yeah. So you let x dash to be this. And uh, so a x dash square plus blah 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 y square plus blah y z plus blah z square. Now you take something common and complete the y and z square also, and you basically let this blah to be b dash and this to be y dash. So you get a x dash square plus b dash y dash square plus c dash z square. So you basically convert this thing into this thing. And since it was equal to zero, it can be transformed to this. And you can analyze this using the Legendre's theorem, which is this. Okay, and this is the finish of the talk. Sorry for my nonsense. I was like very being very nervous, and I just said some wrong things, and which I I guess I hopefully corrected most of them. If you point out any errors, you can say in comments. I will also attach this PDF, and yeah, that's all. And if you have any doubt, you can DM me on Discord or Telegram. I will attach my IDs. Hopefully, I can clear out doubts. Yeah. Okay. Thanks to Aditya for helping me out with this work. Bye. Oh, one more, one more.